Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Kovalt and in this video I'm going to go over some more relationships between properties of gases uh, like I did before. So this is part two. So let's get into this. So the next relationship I want to go over is the relationship between uh, the amount of gas N and the pressure. So just to remind yourself that N is the symbol for the amount of gas normally in moles. So N is equal to moles which is going to be the number of particles of the gas. So here I want to look at the relationship between the number of particles of a gas and its pressure. So when we look at that relationship, we are holding the volume constant and the temperature constant. Again, uh, in order for this relationship to hold, both volume and temperature have to be held constant. If they're not held constant, then this relationship will not hold. So, Keeping those constant, we notice that if you increase the amount of particles, pressure increases, or if you decrease the amount of particles, uh, pressure will decrease. So there is a direct relationship between the amount of particles and the pressure. And so we can understand that uh, looking at the picture here, right? So here the volume is the same. So I have this piston. So the piston is in place. The volume of the container doesn't change. The temperature is the same as well. The only difference here is that I have doubled the amount of particles in the container. So here I start with six, and then I throw in six more over here, and we look at what happens to pressure. Well, remember, pressure, remind ourselves that pressure is equal to the force due to the collisions of the particles against the walls of the container divided by or over the area of the walls themselves, okay? So it's the amount of force per given area. So in this case, the area stays the same because the volume is not changing. The volume stays the same. So what about the force due to collisions? Well, here, when I've only got six particles, the particles are bouncing around. They're going around into the container. They're colliding with each other. They're colliding with the size of the container. And so here, because I only have six particles, then I don't have as many collisions per second, right? So I have less collisions here, but if I double the amount of particles, now I have more collisions. I have more collisions in this circumstance here with double the amount of particles. I'm going to have double the amount of collisions given the same amount of space. So therefore, as collisions increase, then that means that the amount of, uh, the amount of force being applied to the container, right, the more contact the particles are going to have the, with the sides of the container and therefore the total force due to the uh, colliding of the particles on the sides of the container is going to be higher. So total force is going to be higher. So if we're looking at force, so we would expect force to increase. The area stays the same. So since the force is increasing, since we have more particles colliding and putting a force onto the sides of the container, therefore pressure will increase. So again, in this, we can write it like this. So we increase the number of particles, N. That's going to increase the number of collisions on the sides of the container. And increasing the collisions means that you're going to increase, increase the total force of collisions. So more collisions means more total force due to collisions. If you're going to increase the total force due to collisions, then that's going to increase the gas pressure. Why? Because pressure is equal to force per area given. So force per area, area stays the same, force increases. This is the numerator increasing the numerator increases the pressure. Okay, so that is why pressure and the amount of gas are inverse, I'm sorry, in, uh, directly related to each other. And this brings us to our next law, and that is going to be, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the law of, let me look here, sorry. 
and it doesn't seem to have a name. Okay, well, maybe I'll give it a name. So the relationship is direct. So again, we can write that as a number of moles N, or we can write pressure. So pressure, we can do pressure. So pressure is going to be directly related to or directly proportional to the number of moles of the gas or the number of particles of the gas N. So again, when we divide both sides by N, so this will cancel out, we get P over N. Since N divided by N is one, that's gonna be a constant, that's gonna be related to a proportionality constant. So that's going to be equal to a constant. So again, keeping the volume and temperature constant, then the relationship between uh, pressure and uh, amount of gas, this relationship is going to be constant, uh, related to some sort of constant here. So again, we can see that it's directly related. If we double the pressure, then in order to keep this constant, we need to double the uh, amount of gas. So of course that'll cancel out and then we get the same, we get the same ratio. So whatever that ratio is, that'll be equal to that constant. The idea here is that uh, this gives us a kind of law that we can follow, whatever the name of that law is, doesn't seem to have a name. It's gonna be P1 over N1 is equal to P2 over N2. So this is the equation relating pressure and uh, amount of gas. And we've seen this before in our daily lives. So for example, take uh, pressure in your uh, car tire or your bicycle tire, right? So, or say a basketball, a flat basketball or volleyball or whatever ball you want to think of, right? If it's flat, well, how do you build it up? How do you build up the pressure? Well, you pump in more air into the ball, right? The more particles you pump into the ball, what happens? It starts to inflate. Why? Why does it inflate? Because the more particles inside the ball or inside your car tire or your bicycle tire are going to now have more collisions. So you're increasing the amount of collisions that number of collisions is increasing the total force inside the that's being applied to the inside of the tire that's uh, being applied to the, um, the, the, the surface area of the inside of the tire or inside the ball, and therefore pressure increases. So the pressure in the tire increases, the pressure inside the ball will increase. And so that is why um, that happens. So this is the reason why that is true, okay? So you can use this to solve problems. So if, if the volume and temperature are the same, you could use this to solve a problem that's relating the change in pressure with the change in the amount of the gas, the amount of particles of, of that are in, uh, sorry, the amount of particles of gas. So you can use this. So if I have an initial pressure, initial pressure and initial amount of gas, that would be P1 and N1. And then this is going to be my final pressure uh, of uh, final pressure and final amount of gas. So if I start with a certain amount of pressure in, say, my basketball, and I know how much air I have in the basketball, if I increase or decrease the amount of air, if I change that to N2, whatever that is, then I can figure out what the new pressure is going to be after I make that change of the amount of gas, right? And the same thing could be the same with the pressure. I could change the pressure and then I could figure out what the change in the amount of gas is that uh, if the change in pressure. Okay, so the next one, uh, let's go over the next relationship uh, between the uh, properties of gases. Okay, and finally, the last relationship that I'm going to deal with 
is the relationship between the amount of gas and volume. So when we look at the amount of <clears throat> the relationship between the amount of gas N and the volume V, we're keeping the uh, we're keeping the temperature constant and we're also keeping the pressure constant. So again, this is kind of like what we're doing with temperature and volume, keeping the pressure constant. But this time we're, we're keeping the pressure constant and we're keeping the uh, temperature constant as well. So when we keep those constant, uh, we notice that increasing the amount of the gas will lead to an increase in the volume of the gas. If we decrease the amount of gas, then we decrease the volume of the gas as well. And again, this makes sense when we uh, understand it from the point of view of what pressure is. So pressure is the amount of collisions, the force due to the collisions divided by or per area of the walls. So what, what we have here is our picture again. And so in this case, here we have our piston. Again, this piston is movable. So um, right now we have six particles and they're traveling at an average, uh, they have an average kinetic energy, they're traveling at an average velocity. That is not going to change between here. So the average velocities are not going to change. It's just the uh, number of particles. So we have six particles here. They're moving at this stage here, at this beginning stage, the pressure due to the gas particles inside is equal to the outside pressure. So this piston is not moving right now. But let's say I pump in some more particles. So this is like my basketball. So I pump in more particles. And so now I double the amount of particles. Now at this stage, I have more particles. Therefore, I have more collisions up against the side of the container, therefore a greater uh, force. So because I have greater force uh, uh, happening here, greater force means higher pressure. Remember, the pressure is due to the amount of force in a given amount of uh, area, applied to a given area. So here I have a small area. If I put in, if I double the amount of particles in here, then the pressure initially will be higher, right? Because I have more particles, more collisions, more force. So what's going to happen to the piston because of the greater amount of force? It's going to move. It's going to be pushed up. So that way, the pressure can be uh, decreased. So again, it's going to push up the piston here until the pressure on the inside is once more equal to the pressure outside. So initially it was equal with six particles. Then I throw in six more and I doubled it. So now the pressure is double, right? Because I have doubled the amount of particles. So initially from that point, it's gonna be higher pressure than the outside pressure. But because this piston is able to move, the piston will adjust in order to create that balance again and to allow the pressure on the inside to become equal to the outside once again. So then that, that's what happens here. The piston is now at higher, so we've kind of doubled the volume here. So because, <clears throat> because we have twice as many particles, so the particles are able to push the piston up until now the pressure is equal to the outside again. So now we're back to the same pressure we had before. So that's constant. But now look at the volume. The volume is greater because we have more particles. So if we look at the reasoning here, right? Increased number of particles, N, leads to an increased number of collisions. The increased number of collisions increases the total force of collisions on the sides or walls of the container. So increasing the particles, increasing the number of collisions, therefore increasing the force that is the total force on the sides of the container. And so therefore the initial increased force per area. 
So therefore we get an initial increase in pressure. So that increase in pressure is then going to cause the inside of the container, the pressure on the inside is going to be higher than the pressure on the outside, therefore causing the container to expand by moving the piston up to this level here. When the container expands, pressure is going to go down on the inside until it equalizes. So the inside pressure decreases until it's equal to the outside pressure. And this is going to cause an increase in volume. This results in an increase in the volume of the container. So that's the relation between increased particles, increased volume. And this leads us to our last and final law. This law does have a name. So here we have the relationship between number of particles and volume. Right, so here, or I can, I can flip it around. Let me flip it around so I'm at least consistent with what I'm doing. So volume is proportional to the amount of gas particles. And so if I divide both sides by N, right, that becomes one. And so I get volume over N is then gonna be equal to some constant. Oops. Sorry about that. So here I have V over N. In order to keep this constant, whatever I do to volume, I have to do the same thing to the amount of particles. Whatever I do to the amount of particles, the same has to be done to the volume. So if I double the amount of particles, then the, the amount of volume has to double in order to keep this constant. So of course, I get the same ratio when I can't, twos cancel out, I get the same ratio back. So this is constant. So what is this law? So the equation is V1 over N1 is equal to V2 over N2. And so this law is called Avogadro's law. So according to Avogadro's law, the uh, change uh, in volume is going to be directly proportional to the change in the amount of the gas that we have, such that these uh, whatever change I make in the volume has to be the same as the change made in the amount of the gas. So these two sides are equal. So this is the initial volume and, and amount of gas that I start with. Whatever I change, if I change the volume to give me a new volume, volume two, then I can solve this equation to find the amount of N2. Okay, and so this is Avogadro's law. And so that's it for the relationships and the laws of the gases. So um, in my other videos, I'll go over how to use these laws and um, I'll go over the ideal gas law and the combined gas law. So you've learned all about these laws. There's like five, uh, there's like four laws and one other relationship. So how are you going to remember all this? Well, in all reality, um, you only need to remember the combined gas law, which is them all together. And so I, in another video, I will explain that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, if you learned from this video, if this was helpful in any way, then please like the video, share the video with your friends and family. Put that, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell. And when you do, make sure you click all so you'll be notified by all the videos I put out. And then uh, uh, finally, put a comment down below in your, in, in down below. Let me know what you think. Ask me questions. I'm sorry, I'm tongue tied here. Um, if you have a topic you want me to cover, then put that down below. If you have a question or a particular uh, problem you want me to help you with, then please put that down below so that way I can help you. 
I would love to do that for you. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.